All right, so today I'm rewrapping insulated wire. Insulated wire is used in stoves and ovens. Anytime there's high, uh, wire is exposed to a high temperature, it's going to have uh, a high temperature wrapping on it. Now, this actually is a wrapping because there's a normal rubber, I mean, uh, insulated, you know, like plastic or rubber insulated wire or insulation underneath this stuff. This is the stuff that protects that insulation from getting melted. So, to do this, I use a number of tools, uh, you know, knife and uh, some dikes, you know, wire crimpers. This, you're going to find out why I use the, the lighter here in a bit. And then I recrimp ends onto the wire because I actually have to take this, I have to strip the insulation off. And the reason I have to strip the insulation off is because it's been chewed by mice. Okay, so, and it's interesting because they wanted the cloth, but they didn't want the, the insulation underneath. So the wire underneath is actually good. So, again, I'm using this stuff, and then I'm using, for the ends, I'm using shrimp, shrink wrap, some 3M shrink, shrink wrap, to actually uh, get the ends just like this, okay? Uh, the wire, as I mentioned, is used, it's from a stove. And it's, it's this type of wire here that actually connects to the spark igniters for these burners, okay? So that's where you're going to see this type of wire. But you'll also see it in ovens, usually on the upper part of the oven, where heat's going to be rising and, and affecting, you know, possibly affecting the wire. So the wire has to be protected. So it's got this heat insulation on there. And again, you know, these wires are chewed as well. Uh, the mice like to use this stuff for um, nesting, so that's what happened here. So getting back to the wire that, we're, that we have at hand, um, you have to strip the wire first, and then you have to put the insulation on there, okay? So I've already cut this end off here. Um, I've sliced this, okay, already. So this part just peels off, and then, you know, just take my dykes, my handy-dandy dykes, cut off the other end, and bam, it's off, okay? Now, getting the, the insulation off is going to require a little bit of patience because, and this is a short piece of wire here, because um, you, I want to try to get it to where the wiring is, I'm not cutting through the, the bottom part of the insulation on the wire. So, I'm just going to kind of run it through with a blade here and just kind of try to strip off this, this part's already stripping off here, and you kind of get the idea here, okay? So it looks like this wire actually got stained by the uh, by the insulation, but anyway. Okay, so I just kind of run it all the way up here, through the wire here, all the way up, until I can actually just strip that insulation off. And I'm trying to be careful not to cut the, uh, the, ins the normal uh, rubber insulation on the wire itself. So I'm just being very, very careful about getting this to go through here. And this is just a pretty sharp blade that I'm using here. You, you want to use definitely use something about the sharpness of a razor. Try not to bite into the insulation underneath because, it, again, it's two layers of insulation. It's this heat insulation, and then there's the actual wire insulator underneath that. And you can see I'm kind of getting through it there. And just stripping it away and naturally you know the longer the wire the more patience you're going to have to have to do this okay now i should be able to just kind of take this stuff and peel it off of here and it, it is cloth so you can see it's kind of messy kind of kind of like fiberglass almost the covering but it's not a, it's not a fiberglass obviously because it's high temperature and the insulation that I'm going to be replacing it with you'll see in a second here I use uh, Insultherm and it comes in one color I, I can't really you know I'm not going to go ahead and do a full color coded you know each one of these wires was coated with a different insulation and that's because it was a factory process you know I mean for me to get different colored insulation and do every wire it would be just absolutely ridiculous so I just get a nice long roll of the uh, of the insulator that I'm working with. Just kind of peel it off here, and yeah, it did it did stain that wire. It's kind of interesting. The uh, the last one I had was orange, 
but it didn't it didn't stain the wire like this one did. I'm going to go this direction just so I don't cut the because I cut the insulation on the inside a little bit, and I don't want to do that. Okay, so just kind of go through here and get this guy clear of here. Now, like I said, the longer the piece, the more tedious this process gets. And again, I'm, I'm trying not to cut the under layer, which is this rubber insulation right here. I'm trying not to cut that as I go along that wire. And this is rubber, by the way, or, well, it's a hybrid type rubber, you know, normal wire insulation, okay? So now the wire is clear of all that thermal wrap, okay? So now I'm going to use some black insulation on here, okay? Insultherm, and it's called True Fit. It's actually good for uh, a thousand, I think it's 1100 degrees is what it is. It's high temp, uh, flexible fiberglass sleeving, 1200 degrees it's rated for. So, you know, that's gonna be plenty for this. Uh, I could even use it in an oven to where these wires could be exposed to higher temperatures. But since it's gonna be used on a stove, you know, you're not gonna see 1200 degrees. So, I just kind of match it up here, get a piece that's as long as the uh, the wire that I'm putting it on, cut it off with my scissors, bam, you can see it's got a, you know, the wire's just going to go through the middle of that, so just kind of run it through. Now, if I was doing a really long piece of wire, I would actually get like let's say this wire was twice as long, right? I would get two pieces and I would do it end to end because it gets harder and harder to push this wire through as it goes through. This is easy because this is a short piece. So I should have this through in short order here. And then what I would do, uh, you know, to meet both ends in the middle, I would actually uh, shrink wrap, you know, shrink the middle. Like I might even have to show that on this piece. This piece actually might be a little bit too long to do that with. Okay, so that's what I'll do. So now I gotta find the end of the wire, which is right here, okay? I'm gonna just snip this off. Okay, I'm gonna push that wire through. And I wanna get, on this end, I wanna get as long a piece that I cut off of this on here. So I'm gonna pull it through a little bit to where we're about matched up there. Bring it a little bit short. Okay, so I'll show you how to do it on this side. So on this side here, I'm gonna cut a piece right about there. Just kind of snip it off. Feed it on through. Okay, so now where the two wires meet, I'm going to run some of this insulation here that I was showing you earlier, okay? So I'm just going to shrink that on there. I'm going to cut a piece there. This cuts right off. I'm going to feed it through here. And I'm going to join the two in the middle with this insulation. So, this is shrink wrap, okay? So you got to heat it, and uh, I'm going to have to go here where it's not windy. Just kind of heat it, and it'll shrink right on there. And bam, we have the two ends joined, okay? Now, I'm going to put the ends on. So, first of all, if you remember, I cut these guys off, so I have to strip the wire. Okay, and it's about, it's about, uh, it's probably, I think it's probably like 14 gauge. So I'm going to strip this wire on both ends. One. And two. Okay. I'm going to grab myself a couple of these guys. And these do come in gauges, so... 
The gauge that I'm working with is a very thin gauge uh, spade connector at the end, so it's going to be a little tiny guy like that. And the wire gauge is also important when you're using this stuff. So I match the wire gauge to the wire, and I'm matching the spade connector to the uh, spade that it's the spade that it's going to go on later when it connects on its end. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this stuff on first, just because. I don't want to have to squeeze it over that spade connector. So on this end here, I'm just going to push it on there. Okay. Push that guy, well, make sure it's all wrapped there. Push this guy on here and then just crimp it. So since it's a certain gauge, I'm going to use my crimping tool, crimp it on maybe twice. Pull on it to make sure it's not going to come off. Pull this up to here. And then just shrink wrap it on. And you can see how efficiently it works. Okay, same with the other side. Get my little shrink wrap tubing again. Cut a piece that will go over that. Got to be a shorter piece this time, just like that. Pop this guy in here, and that's the piece I cut off. So I'm gonna get my little piece on there, a little spade connector. Do a nice crimp job on it. Rip it twice, make sure I can't pull it off. Pop this guy up over here, and then just shrink it back on, and bam, I'm done. I've got a fully insulated wire, good for 1200 degrees. Remember I had to join them both at the middle here, and the ends are shrink wrapped, and the spade connectors are on there, ready to put into place, and we're done. So it's as simple as that. Once I have this here, I'm going to attach those little uh, spark igniters to these guys. This goes to the control that's on the bottom there, and done deal. Thanks for watching the video.